Hey YouTube, welcome back to UniXTCG, and today we are going over yellow in set 2.5 before we start coming together for some more cohesive types of content for this format going into Gen Con, or uh, I guess Niagara if you're going. I'm not, but you may be about to. So we're putting this video at a 100 like goal. Uh, something I want you guys to know is that on the Patreon, we are in the midst of a top 64 Vegeta giveaway. This is the giveaway for July. We'll be announcing the uh, winners in early August. And we're also currently deciding on the next deck for me to deep dive into test and break down. Uh, streams will be coming back as soon as the client gets updated with the ban list. And the last thing I wanted to say is that we are building up UniXDB, which is my Dragon Ball channel. So hop over there, links in the description, maybe try to uh, like a couple videos, check out the content, we're doing pretty much everything Dragon Ball there. But as long as we are monetized on that channel, by October, I'll be giving away two copies of Sparking Zero with another copy thrown in for every 1,000 subscribers we get past that. So with that being said, let's hop into yellow. So welcome back to this sort of segment. As per usual, we're going to talk about what really kind of held uh, yellow back and then why yellow is actually going to be in a better place now than it was before. So basically what yellow has always been able to do is apply a lot of bodies and then go into value town because of the way you can accrue cards in hand uh ginyu frogs allow you to kind of get a huge advantage chain going on as long as you are playing a uh, frieza and you're not going up against a red and stuff like that you had ways to just keep adding bodies have a consistent awakening protect said bodies with frieza's leader skill or go extremely aggressive with uh cooler and or ginyu but the thing that kind of happened when set two came out was that goku Taku. He was able to press damage while clearing the board at the same time. Between um, between things like God Pame immediately ruining coolers, uh, three drop go on from set one, softening the board to get crashed into, uh, Whis destroying your advantage engines, and then even cards like SR Gohan being able to come down and remove things without even touching them, which is turning sideways once you've already you know maybe used a three drop set one go on. Yellow was losing a lot of momentum. And while yellow could definitely combat red to a very good degree, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that it was unwinnable, it was just not favorable. Yellow's matchup into blue was abysmal. Uh, Zamasu is bottom decking your Bulmas. Zamasu is bottom decking your your uh, Ginyu Frogs. Um, Sickle is single-handedly ruining your life. Uh, Vegitos are one for one in your board while making your Zamasu is able to to uh Mike means the is able to remove two drops and even three drops if they have multiple Vegitos. There was a lot of issues. And if your board ever got too wide, there's a lot of cards such as Zeno that could really, really hamper it. Um, you have the double strikers that are actually putting in work. Like when you put in a five cost Vegeta and he bottom decks a cooler, a five or four cost cooler, and then you can start attacking your opponent with it, that gets really, really rough. So with that the best matchup that yellow could feed on was green and green was non-existent because red was so strong well now we are past that with top coup band you immediately get to see green come back and because green is back yellow now has its almost freemium plus matchup in the format again and red is weakened so really the only thing that yellow has to watch out for is blue and that's if the blue player knows what they're doing and is building right uh yellow is still able to make tons of value it has some crazy snapped awakening plays and uh you're able to spam the board or even go a little bit more mid-range so let's actually talk about the uh kind of bread and butter of the color before we start talking about the leaf. So amongst other things, uh, when you look at what yellow gained in this set, essentially the pillars are going to be, I mean, besides the Vegeta leader, which adds a little bit of a different matchup, especially in the mirror, you're going to be gaining one drop Bulma, which is just a really great self awakener, uh, allowing you to open up a lot of plays as well as just draw cards while getting closer to your awakening. You have got three cost Vegeta, which offers a very, very nice layer of protection versus green. And then you are also going to be gaining six cost Golden Frieza. Um, Golden Frieza is a monster of a card, pretty much locking the, uh, potentially locking the green matchup. A three drop Vegeta next to a Golden Frieza pretty much just means green cannot play, and that's kind of wild. But you are also looking at some nice little, uh, like just like 
additions to the color such as awakening to uh, blue which is going to be some nice spot removal for certain things you're getting time rewound which is an excellent card especially when paired with bulma uh yeah there's just a lot of uh like a fair amount of cards that it got from this set and now that you don't have red just goomba stomping the ginyu frogs as well as the uh as the bulmas you you have a lot more you can work with the three cost vegeta kind of forces your opponent into the combo step so in the mirror as well as the um in the mirror as well as the green matchup this is very very strong it's actually fairly strong even in the red matchups but against blue they will completely bypass this and just start bottom decking your stuff which is gonna suck so with that being said let's talk about the leaders and uh yeah how they are viable i guess this format uh this little pocket format we have and we'll start off with frieza so with frieza uh the classic end of your turn untap two uh this is really really good you can protect your ginyu frogs to continue drawing with them if they stay on the board uh put up your bulmas that you can retap them in order to get their draw effects a lot of cool things uh anything that you don't want getting destroyed immediately especially if you're not in the uh in the, especially if you're in the matchup that's not gonna have them get destroyed like the the four cost goku that uh, is going to be able to tap. I forgot he's also a house that came into this set. But uh, yeah, untapping him so that he can be safe to keep locking down your opponent's board. All sorts of cool little niche abilities. As for the format though, uh, against green, you want to have Vegeta, three cost Vegeta on lock, and Frieza is counterintuitive to this effect, untapping your cards and uh, pretty much putting you in a position where green can actually blow up your stuff again then you're looking at your red matchups and it's fine there red doesn't have as much uh, destruction unless it's beers i think beers can still ball with beers and starter q will probably have more removal whereas u7 will have more attacking and against u7 you have the ability to just untap your cards not let them get attacked which is great for that matchup uh blue doesn't really matter whether they're tapped untapped they're probably still just getting bottom decked and then in the mirror because of set two's like complete additions of locking mechanics yeah freeze is not as good into the mirror as it could have been anymore simply because these effects say your opponent cannot untap this card until the end of their turn and freeze's effect activates in the end of turn so you're going to be sitting here like if they lock down your card with like goku or the three cost gohan or five cost golden frieza you're not going to be able to untap that card with your leader effect essentially just taking away one of the targets making it effectively a worse card so be mindful of that uh blue is still going to be a myth matchup but yeah you have the ability to kind of work with that um and then you go over into uh, the next one which would be eh, cooler i'm gonna be real i'm gonna be real i'm sorry for you cooler lovers but th that boy is done he got no help this set every play style that you could play with them can be done better with another leader cooler is not better than vegeta frieza nor ginyu and so it's just kind of rough you can play him he's not unplayable he's just not better than those <laughs> and ooh, i mean unfortunately that's just kind of how it is so we'll move over to vegeta vegeta in my opinion he offers a better mirror match because he is going to protect his cards in the uh combo step where yellow is forced to go um he's also going to be just as good into green which is gonna of course abuse four uh, three cost vegeta to keep all your stuff in a good space um he can even be good against these kind of mid-range go tall strategies like u7 might not be able to go wide enough because both decks will be going wide so your bodies will be attacking bodies um i think that vegeta actually has some very 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 good matchups the only place where he may be lacking uh in terms of that compared to frieza is probably just the red matchups if i'm not mistaken blue is going to operate the same against you guys um green is going to operate the same against you guys blues uh well the mirror matches i think that vegeta is better into the mirror than frieza just because frieza's leader skill gets kind of blank depending on the board state so i think that's kind of that and then you have ginyu who is the only one that actually operates a little differently uh, all the decks can use the Ginyu package, but Ginyu is the only one that could double your swings in a turn. And so you have these turns where you can essentially just be swinging with your leader to get your draw, setting up your board, knowing that the moment you awaken, you're just going to attack your opponent with like the Wrath of Kami. And it's just going to be wild, like absolutely wild. 
uh, your opponent's just gonna get kind of slammed with that kind of pressure and it's it's intense it's the only yellow deck that you can you have to play differently you literally are going to play it as almost like a sit back and wait deck until you explode by using the leader effect to attack potentially 13 times in one turn it's actually insane and maybe that will be the next yellow deck i kind of dive into uh on the patreon but like i said they're still voting so yeah if you want to join that join up the patreon but with that being said i think that uh Yellow is going to be a very, very interesting color, and now we have to talk about them deeper into their matchups and their format. So real quick, I will have a word for my sponsors, and then we'll hop right into that. All right, y'all, taking a quick moment to shout out the sponsors for this video. First up is Mystic TCG, a store based in Missouri that sells all sorts of TCG product, even more than what you see featured here on this page. They also buy singles, collections, and prize cards. So make sure you actually catch them out in their store in Missouri at an event, or even on their Facebook just to be able to see the events here, but also ask them what they're up to and what they're looking for in terms of vending. You can also use the code UNIXTCG to get discounts off your pre-orders as well as orders. So make sure you get your TCG product while it's hot. Then you have Eclipse Cards and Hobby based out of Texas, and if that sounds familiar, they did sponsor me with a box of Fusion World Set 1. But as you can see on this page, there is a plethora of TCG products that they are actually having for sale at their establishment. You can also even buy things that aren't just TCG products. As you can see on the screen right here, they hold their own locals, they hold their own events, and they are going out to more and more events. You can actually check their Facebook to see their schedule, as well as call and ask about their vending list, and at the checkout for their website, you can use the code UNI10X to actually get percentages off your pre-orders or your orders. So go check it out as well. And we're always up to all sorts of things in Universe X. So you can go down the description and check the link tree to find out about my other channels, my Twitch, or any other avenues that I'm creating content on. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can always go down to any description on any video and find my Amazon affiliate links. These products here will differ from video to video to cater to the audience in question, but it's just very easy to see something that you may like or be interested in open it up and choose the style and or color that'll work for you all proceeds will give kickbacks to the channel so it'll be some direct support and i'll always appreciate the help from you guys so with that being said let's get back to the video cool stores cool events cool owners check out the links in the description but now that we are back over to yellow there's a few ways that you can actually build yellow, though I am going to say that I do think that one is more correct than the other, because you can build a very sturdy mid-range that focuses on advantage, or you could build one with the Ginyu package that focuses on aggression, and I think that realistically, you get enough of the value out of the aggressive build to just warrant the upsides of essentially smoking green right off the rip, and having explosive turns where you take the kind of aggro red mentality of a card is a card. Every time I go neutral with you, when you're at four or less life and you have to discard a card, if I can just send more neutral attacks your way than you have cards in hand, I win the game. Uh, that being said, I do think that it is just more advantageous to play the aggro version than the just full on kind of mid range version because the mid range version allows green to set up on you and it gives blue more time to find their outs, play their outs while pressing you and that's just not good. Whereas if you're playing the aggro version, your green matchup is almost free. Your red matchup becomes very, 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 very hairy for the red player and your blue matchup gives you the least amount of time gives them the least amount of time to find their outs and try to remove your board. But it's still an uphill matchup just because the way blue works. Now, when it comes to this, um, the Ginyu package is still very, very strong, but adding Bulma completely revolutionized the game. Like, just know right now that if your opponent opens up the highest of the highs, and on turn two, they play a, a two-drop Awakener. Turn three, they they drop in and go okay well we're going to now put uh sorry turn three they hit you with the okay i'm going to drop the raccoon into the ginyu and the ginyu untaps two energy and then let's say they just play two bulmas you're cooked you are literally cooked they're about to swing with raccoon tap two bulmas gain two life and then draw two cards and then awaken to get a fifth card added to their hand the hand is going to double and you just have to be ready for that because the following end of the turn they're going to untap both bulmas if they're playing frieza and that's just it like not like for the game but like that's a huge momentum swing they just added mad bodies to the board and by the way they just doubled their hand 
it really is a destructive play. You can do the same play in uh, both Ginyu and Vegeta 2. You just don't untap the Bulmas, but you get some other cool effects. Uh, Vegeta is going to untap his energy, allowing you to use things like Time Rewound to untap Bulmas and retap them for draws, at least squeezing one more draw out of them. So in a way, you still kind of get the Frieza-esque kind of plays out of them. Um, and then on top of that, with Ginyu, while you do this effect, you won't be able to untap the Bulmas and you won't be able to untap the energy but you will be able to potentially draw into a whole bunch of cards to play into next turn, potentially hitting your Ginyu, uh, Raikum into Ginyu combo again to untap and to go Brazy off of that. So when it comes to these guys, uh, realistically, I would put Frieza and Vegeta could both of those like leaders are at the top of yellow. Legitimately, if you were, if your name is not cooler, you could be played right now. However, I will say you should give Ginyu a chance because if it's your playstyle, it's incredibly fun and the deck is incredibly strong. It's just not as flexible as Vegeta or um, Frieza, but in exchange for that, it has some of the highest aggression in this game, period. You just have to know that your game plan sticks to the same game plan each game, and that does, in turn, make you a little more vulnerable to uh, your opponent breaking your board before you decide to go all in with it. So you do have to understand that if you play Ginyu, you have to play a little bit differently, but its success can be astounding when the combos go off. That being said, Frieza and Vegeta, I think you can honestly choose either one. Their cores are very, very, very similar. They play a lot of the same cards. So it's really, really not like breaking like any 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 bylaws trying to choose one or the other i think whichever one you like more whichever effect you feel like you get more value out of that's the one you play because there's no guarantee you'll face the mirror and i do think that vegeta has a better mirror match than frieza in the yellow color but that's not enough to really sway an entire tournament so yeah let me know what you guys feel about this let me know in the comments and if uh you guys are in the patreon watching this right now remember to vote on uh, what deck we're doing next for the uh, deck tech and breakdown. I am excited to test. I got about a month until Gen Con comes up and uh, I will be participating in two regionals while I'm there. So yeah, make sure that uh, you let me know what you want to test because I am just having a lot of fun with this content. Now that we are done with all four colors, we're gonna get into some more comprehensive format content, but we're also gonna really start putting set three under a microscope and uh, kind of breaking it down from there. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you check out all the links in the description. Go over to UniXDB. Like I said, if as long as I'm monetized by uh, October, I'm giving away two copies at least of Sparking Zero. And we're going to have a great time over here in Universe X. Thanks. See you next time.